So when's the recession? <laughs> You know, I like to think of this economy as the little engine that could. It just keeps chugging along, and it's got this solid foundation that it's that it's moving from. Um, we're, we're, we're growing at this uh, strong, steady, stable rate. We got good news today, and as you noted, on top of good news um, from GDP and strong consumer spending, strong um, real disposable growth in, in uh, personal income last week as well. So what we learned today is that we created 353,000 jobs, um, and mm -hmm. to, and this last month marks the, the two-year anniversary of seeing the unemployment rate below 4%. It held steady last month hmm. at 3.7%, but this below 4% for two years, that's a record going back over half a century. And that, I think, is a real testament to the strength of this economy and the ongoing um, strength of this economic recovery. There were some concerns in this report about wages rising. I'm, I'm guessing that that is good news for the White House as well, to be able to message to people that there's more money in their pockets. But it was a deliberate increase in wages. And I wonder if you, you have any concern with the progress that's been made on inflation that that could reignite prices. Well, let's be very clear. The president um, certainly wants to see uh, workers' real take-home pay go up, you know, especially after the fact that we have had this inflation. You know, getting those wages to be higher than inflation is really an important piece of the puzzle. And so we did get good news today. Um, over the past year, wages rose by 4.5 percent. Um, and so that, that pace of growth means that there's more money in people's pockets. They're able to cope with the higher prices that they've been facing. And, you know, combined with the fact that there are jobs out there, that means that there's more economic opportunity. It's consistent with so much other data we see out there. Um, you know, and, and I would add, you know, in terms of the economic opportunity, we um, also saw that we've seen three years now of, of record high numbers of people starting small businesses. So that opportunity, that sense of optimism, those higher wage gains, that, that higher income all feeds into it. And then, of course, that all feeds into the stable demand that has been powering economic growth. Bloomberg spoke today with the former uh, Treasury Secretary Larry Summers after the numbers came out. Here's his take, Heather. We'll have you respond. The economy's been surprising on the upside for a while, so I was surprised, not shocked. It was a very strong uh, number. And what that suggests is that despite the interest rate hikes of the Fed, there's a lot of strength uh, in uh, the economy. Stubborn strength, it, it seems, Dr. Boucher, uh, and I wonder if you worry about that. Like, I won't ask you about the Fed or, or what Jay Powell's working on, but concerns about things like mortgage rates, the ability to borrow money, folks who may not be as well off. Going into the second half of this year, do you expect any relief for consumers? Well, let's be clear. Consumers have been getting relief. We have seen the pace of price increases go down you know, over the past six months. That has been more at the 2% level than not. And so that has certainly been progress. And of course, we did see that you know, there have been some specific goods that, can, that are really important to consumers where prices are actually lower than they had been a year ago. Toys, appliances, the price of eggs and milk, for example. And certainly, yeah. the president understands that there are higher prices, but you know, we have seen those paces slow. You know, I think the real challenge here has been that economic forecasters haven't been getting, um, you know, haven't had the, the right crystal ball to predict the economy. You know, over a year ago, they predicted that in 2023, we would see a decline of 0.1 percent growth on average. And in fact, we saw that the economy grew by over 3 percent. And so I think that the problem is really that you know, we're coming out of this historic pandemic and getting those numbers right, getting our sense of how quickly we, we could recover because the president took bold, decisive actions. And because we've been making these investments all across the United States that have been crowding in private capital, I think it's been hard to, to, for forecasters to get it right. But I think yeah, what we see now sure. with this data you know, is that looking in the rearview mirror, things have been actually much better than we had anticipated. And that is great news for American families. And it really does mean we have strength um, uh, in our economy right now. A lot of broken crystal balls out there, Heather Boucher. I want to ask you <laughs> lastly about an important component of this report, women entering the workforce helped to offset a decline in men's workforce participation. That stood out to me because of the conversation that we were having at the end of last year on the precipice of what the administration and others were referring to as the child care cliff, knowing that COVID uh, uh, incentives, funding for child care programs was coming to an expiration. 
Is this good or bad news? Are women getting back into the workforce because they are losing, in many cases, that child care or that, that economic relief? Or did the child care cliff not materialize? Well, I think it's the, the, you know, what's really important here is that families need access to care services. They need access to home care. Mm -hmm. They need access to child care so that they can get to work. And that was one of the core planks of the American Rescue Plan was to make sure that families had access to those and also to make sure that those jobs are good jobs for those workers that have them. And we've seen that jobs have come back in home care, but we haven't seen all those jobs come back in child care yet. And so that creates challenges for families. We know that the United States still is behind many of our economic competitors and our labor force participation rates for both men and women. We have room to grow there, but that really does hinge on making sure that workers have the supports they need to be able to participate fully in employment. Um, and I'll note, too, on the cliff issue, um, it's not one cliff. It's yeah. because the states all each have their own programs um, that, you know, this has been sort of a, a moving off in, in phases. Um, so we are very concerned about what's happening to families. The president has been concerned about that from day one. But we are heartened to see these labor force participation numbers. It does mean that women want to be in the labor force. They want to have access to this enormous economic opportunity in front of us.